If you want to listen to this episode or any of our episodes ad-free, you can do that now. Head on over to Patreon. Click on the ad-free level. You get all of our bonus shows that you've been hearing so much about. Plus, every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you can listen to this episode or any of our other episodes at the same time, ad-free, over on Patreon. Today, we revisit this chat that I had with Todd and Julie Chrisley only a few months ago. You know, as they say, hindsight is 2020. I think it's really interesting to listen to this, you know, now that we know all that has happened with the Chrisleys. And look, I don't wish harm or bad on anyone. I just think it's an interesting listen, you know, to go back only a few months, like were there signs, you know, especially when certain topics were you know, discussed. I mean, this all was going on then. It didn't just explode out of nowhere, you know, so now that they've been found guilty, you know, of the various crimes, I just think it's interesting to go back and listen and, you know, kind of see if we hear clues. And today we share this chat from around probably January with Julie and Todd Chrisley. Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the ones, the onlys, Mr. Todd Chrisley and Miss Julie Chrisley. Hello, how are you? How are you guys doing today? What's up? We're doing great. We're Thank doing you. great. We're great. Well, welcome, welcome. Where are you guys in the world? I know you've moved so much. I can't keep up. Are you in Tennessee still? We're in Nashville. We're still in Nashville. Nashville is home for us. I love it. Well, listen, I want to talk all about this partnership and ambassador with Nutrisystem. Really, not just lip service, this whole new sedentary lifestyle. It's not, it's not going good for me. So I actually have real questions for you about <laughs> Nutrisystem. You know, things are going in the wrong direction. So, but before we get there, I have to say, you know, March 11th, 2014, Chris Lee Knows Best premieres on the USA Network. Could you guys ever have predicted this eight years later? You know, I don't think that any of us ever went into this with the expectation that we were going to be now going into 10 seasons. I think that it was titled, I I remember seeing an email that I wasn't supposed to see. And it was very early on and it said in the subject line, the little engine that could. Well, now it's turned into the train that did. And, you know, it's, you know, Chrisley Knows Best has sparked Growing Up Chrisley. And, you know, there's other projects that are coming out that you're going to, that's going to be, you know, put out in the press here soon. And, you know, we're 10 seasons in and, you know, I think we're at our 200th episode and, you know, our numbers continue to go up and the viewership continues to grow. And in television today, that's rare, you know, because you have so many ways of watching television. But I mean, just think about it. And I don't want to brag, but I mean, God has blessed us here. I mean, we're not only on USA Network, we're on Bravo, we're on E, and we're on Peacock. We're one of the biggest streaming shows on Peacock. And that, I mean, the glory goes to God because, I mean, you know, we know that we're just doing what he wants us to do. And so to say, did we ever believe that we would be where we are today? No, I never also believed that I'd tell you that I was 53, but I'm going to tell you I'm 53. (laughs) Well, you know, we've all seen the show, Todd, so we know you like to brag, so it's okay. This is behind the velvet rope. You could brag all you want. But I mean, listen, we had the Kardashians. We had like John and eight plus, you know, John and Kate plus eight. We had Duck Dynasty. Like whose idea was it to say, wait, maybe our family, maybe this is something. Like, was that your idea, Todd? Julie, like who came up with No, we were actually approached by someone um, who felt like that I think their their first way of trying to get us to do the show was you guys are the southern version of the Kardashians. You're yeah. so I mean, all of you are so beautiful and and you know, you're so outspoken and I mean you're funny. And and I said, Yeah, but we're from the South. We don't put our dysfunction on the front porch for everybody to see. And then, you know, we did a I agreed reluctantly to do a sizzle reel. Didn't even know what that was at the time. And now I own a production company, Todd Christie Productions. So, um, you know, we shot the sizzle reel. They then took it out to 
10 different networks and they received 10 offers. Wow. And so, you know, I remember thinking, wow, why would somebody really want to watch us? And I remember being told, you know, listen, if we get 500,000 viewers, we know we've got a platform that we can grow. And the first season, I think it was 780. I mean, the first episode was like 780,000 viewers. Yeah. And then it continued to grow. And I think that after the fourth episode, it was picked up immediately for a second season. And now uh, we laugh about it because we started out with eight episodes and then it went from eight to 12. And now we do 26 episodes of Chrisley Knows Best a season. And we do eight episodes of Growing Up Chrisley. So, you know, we're doing, what is that? 34 episodes of television a year. Wow. Well, did you hear the word Kardashian and say, ka-ching, ka-ching? You know, I think that anyone that says that they have not been affected in some way by the Kardashians, it's a lie. Um, I love that entire family. They have been very gracious to us. And I have never been around or ever met anyone that is harder working than those girls. Um, but certainly, I think you would have looked at the Kardashians and their level of success and how Chris has managed that and said, wow, I, w- I want to follow in her footsteps. You know, maybe not in, in every way, but certainly in the way of navigating through the business side of it. Did, did she or anyone give you advice like when you were first starting from the Kardashian family? You know, I'm very close with Chloe and I love her dearly. And she is my, Chloe is my spirit animal. I think that she's the sweetest, kindest, most genuine human being and an amazing mother. And I mean, I just think that I have watched Chris with the girls and how she's navigated all of the successes some of the setbacks, some of the heartbreaks, some of the celebration. And certainly I would say that we have taken pages out of their book as to what to do and what not to do. Do you guys have like a high and a low from the whole 10 seasons? You know, you've you've shared so much of your life with our family. Like, is there one thing that sticks out as the high that we've seen or one thing that sticks out as the low? You know, I don't know that we have had a lot lot of lows, um, you know, on the show, um, you tune into us to feel good. You tune into us to laugh. And so we don't want to make you sad. We don't want to make you watch our show and then walk away and feel worse than you did before you tuned in. So I think the disservice to us is that we are so conscientious about making people feel good about their lives that we keep a lot of our stuff inside and we deal with it privately. And so our, our level of escapism is with each other because, you know, we have learned very early on that to keep your circle very tight, because if you don't, someone will cash in on it. That's really good advice. What about, you know, listen, like the Kardashians could tell you, like you said, like the cameras are there. There's lots of, you know, who has changed the most from, you know, who might love the cameras a little too much? I mean, we have the two of you, Savannah, Chase, we have Nanny. Nanny. I think that it would shock you, um, you know, because I was going to let this be our last season, what, four seasons. <laughs> right. And every season. Every yeah. season. I was like, okay, we've done it now. You know, we've now passed this, this milestone. You know, we're in very thin air. Um, you know, we were compared to having the highest likability rating since I Love Lucy which was huge for me. I've got a huge portrait of her in our formal living room Mm -hmm. and I grew up with Lucy. So for me to be compared to that was like the epitome of arrival. But I think that after season, after season six is when I said, I'm ready to move on. And then everyone in the family, including my bride said, I don't think we've said everything we need to say. I don't think we've done everything that we can do. And my mother's words were, are you out of your mind? I have a lot of friends because of this show. (laughs) People like me more than they like you. That's why he wants to be off the show, Julie, because I'm the star. So that's the truth. So, you know, my mother, what the show has done is, you know, my mother is 77 years old. She comes from a generation to where women were to be seen and not heard. My mother has a voice now and everyone wants to hear it. And it's been very empowering for her. And that is probably the greatest accomplishment. 
Well, you know, you talk about all these successful spinoffs. Might we see a Nanny Faye spinoff one day? You are going to be very, very excited at what you have coming. I love it. What about true or false? And you could weigh in on this too, Julie. Todd, Savannah is your favorite child. True. Do you really think so? Most of the days. Most days. Um, I don't think that I have a favorite child. I think that I... I certainly don't love any one child. Do you believe that I love one child more than I didn't, other? That's not what he, that wasn't the question. Okay, so let me ask you this. Is, Favorite child. Is your question, is, does Todd have a child that he likes more often than he does others? Sure. Would that be fair? Yes. Okay, then it would be Savannah. But the reason for that is because Savannah is my hardest working child. And I gravitate towards people that are hard workers that don't require a lot of sleep, that knows that they have a list of things that they need to do when they need to get it done. And I'm not, a, I'm not about just dicking around and dragging things out. Um, do I, I don't love Savannah more than I do any of my children. I mean, I would have to say that Chase makes me laugh more. Chase is my funniest child. And, you know, he lights up a room when he walks in. I mean, I can be in a bad mood and he can walk in and do some kind of improv or some kind of impersonation of something. And it causes me to forget why I was even mad. And it's hard to be mad at him because he's that great. But Savannah is a good, decent human being. She takes after her mother. She's an honorable woman. And she, she's just got a servant's heart. Grayson is a 15 year old who's gotten a little bit lippy lately because he's going through that testosterone flush. And I reminded him yesterday, if he wanted to live through puberty, he would remember who raised him. Um, Kyle has, is, has a wonderful heart and, um, and we've had our challenges with Kyle, but thank God he's on the straight and narrow now and doing great, happily married and lives a very private life. And we're proud of him for that. And Lindsay is doing great. She's a single mother now, and she's an exceptional mother. So I think I've raised, we have raised five good children that have stumbled, fallen, gotten back up, dusted themselves off. And I believe that's because they were raised in their faith. Which everyone stumbles, right? Oh, I've stumbled many <laughs> times and woke up in beds I didn't know I was getting in. Join the club. <laughs> what about, well, you know, one thing we see is like, you know, I'm a single gay man who lives in New York. This is a happily married couple we see here. Like, what is the secret? We have Valentine's Day. Like, what is the secret to this marriage? I think the secret to, or rather, I don't even no, know it's a, it's a secret. I think that what makes mine and Julie's marriage work is that we have a mutual respect for each other that we are 100% authentic with each other, that she has allowed me to be who I am and to make no apologies for it. I feel that I have done the same for, for you. Um, and she is my safe place. And I hope that I'm that for her. Um, and I think we made a commitment a long time ago and we've stuck to that. And I think the generations you know, now I just don't think you have that. And, and I say that because we have children that are of this generation. Well, there's too many options. There's today. too many options. It's too easy to pack up your stuff and never look back, you know? And I just don't think people are willing to put in the work. And, you know, listen. There's many times, as wonderful as he is. And, and I, I am would wonderful. love to say, go away. I don't want to see you. But I don't do that. It ain't never when I come in that bedroom. Oh, my gosh. Is Todd as difficult as some might think he is from watching the show, Julie? I mean, I'm not saying that, Todd. He is amazing. I don't take offense to that. Todd is amazing. But yes, he's a man. He's a successful man. He is, he wants things the way he wants them. And you know what? I don't believe our family would be where we are today if he hadn't fought so hard for those things. So I am grateful that he is the way that he is. I think that you might find it, and we'll do this here on your show because we've never done it before. I think that you would find if you were in our home every day that I am probably the most... Um, 
I'm probably one of the most organized people that you will deal with. I'm very matter of fact. It is what it is. There is no gray in my life. It's not in my closet. It's not in my vocabulary. Um, and I believe that you will also find that I'm probably one of the more forgiving people that, that you might know. Would you agree with Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, I believe that, you know, we all sin. We all make mistakes. We all have lapses in judgment. Um, God knows I have. I mean, just Google my first marriage. But um, I mean, it's, but I do believe that the mistakes that we make, if we learn from them, we become a greater version of who the old version was. And I believe that, you know, you know, I'm going to lift the center up. I'm not going to shame them for it. You know, if someone's hungry, I'm going to feed them. If you need clothing, I'm going to clothe you. Um, I'm not here to find comfort in someone else's pain. So I would like to think that when I'm dead and gone, one of the things that my children will say is that my father was a compassionate man. That's important. So you're just likes things a particular way, but you're very forgiving if people don't well, I'm gonna do have them that them. way. I'm going to have them that way. I mean, it, it is, it, it's the only way I know how to live. I don't function well with uh, things in disarray and, and not having their own proper place. I don't function well in an unclean environment. Um, I'm OCD. So, I mean, those are things that I know that I have that I deal with. And uh, that's just how my life has to be. If there's one thing you guys know about me from listening to this podcast, it's that I like options and I like simplicity and I like convenience. And I have to tell you, Talkspace kind of feels like having a therapist in my back pocket. I'm able to reach out to my therapist anytime from anywhere. And that makes taking care of my mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling. You know I'm in the Hamptons all summer, so I mean, I'm on the go. And I just love knowing that if I need to talk to my therapist, I can just send a message from wherever I am, and hey, they respond. Also, I gotta tell you, if you're thinking of therapy, you can sign up for Talkspace, and you can actually start therapy the exact same day. Like I said, simplicity and results. It's a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. As a listener of this podcast, you get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code VELVET to get $100 off your first month. That's VELVET and Talkspace.com. Julie, I know you were involved with Nutrisystem first. Todd, how did you get involved? You know, I think it's fairly known that I always like to be the prettiest one in the family. So, you know, Julie had started doing Nutrisystems and started creeping over into my lane of uh, looking better than I did. And I had put on like 18 pounds after I'd gotten COVID, something happened because I'd always been the same size since high school. And so I went on this partnership program with Julie and with Nutrisystem and ended up liking the food. And I lost I lost my 18 pounds and now I'm down to 172.3, took a picture of it this morning and I'm happy. I feel good. I feel good about kind of where I am. I feel good that I've got to go buy more clothes that actually fit better than the ones that I had. Um, and I think that it's caused us to get to, if it's possible for us to be closer, because I like to think that Julie and I are as close as a couple is going to be. But I think it has caused us to become closer because it's the first job that you and I did together, not really a job, but like partnership. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think having that accountability, I mean, when you have someone that's doing it with you, you know, we're, we're talking about the same things, we're eating the same food, and we're both seeing results. And I think that has been the key. He saw the results in me and decided to join the Better Together Partner Plan. And it just made sense. It was just a natural progression for us. Um, and it's working. Why does it work? Because I saw on your Instagram, Ty, like you were saying, like, you know, you've tried other diets, like, and you were always hungry. And you're like, this is not for me, which is understandable. Like, why does this work? Well, I was never a diet person. I mean, I never had to be on a diet because I had never gained weight since 1986 when I finished school. COVID caused that, but I did start doing shakes, I think mm -hmm. around 2016, mm -hmm. but not to really lose weight because I never lost weight, but it's because I forget to eat. And so Julie would put me on a shake just to make sure that I was getting something because I was between, if I wasn't filming, I was on a phone call. If I wasn't on that phone call, I was filming or I was, 
you know, working on our development deals and things like that. And I'd forget to eat. So she put me on a shake. And then I just, I, something happened with COVID. I was hungry for the first time in my life. And I realized that I just needed to chew. That's what it was. It was just the fact that I wasn't chewing. Well, and I think too, I am a cook. I love to cook. I love to eat. I love good food. And I think Nutrisystem fit in that plan because I could still cook. We could still have a dinner or a lunch. And then I could have my Nutrisystem food as well. So, and it tastes good. And for somebody who likes to cook and likes to eat, I'm not going to eat something that doesn't taste good. It's just, I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to do something that where I feel so restricted. And with Nutrisystem, you don't. If you are in the mood for pasta, there's a pasta dish. If you're in the mood for steak, if you're in the mood for chicken, if you, whatever it is, there's something that fills that. Whether you want an ice cream sandwich or- And they are amazing. Yes, Let me tell are. you something. The ice cream sandwiches is probably one of my favorite things. Who doesn't so love I'm, an ice cream sandwich, right? Right. Exactly. And you don't feel like you're depriving yourself. And so for me, that's why it works. Now I have to say, so I'm going to share these codes with the audience when this comes out. But Julie, so you are <coughs> Nutrisystem.com slash Julie Deal. Todd, yes. you are Nutrisystem.com slash Todd 50. Now we know you're 53. Is this Todd 50 a reference to the fact that you would like us to think you're 50 years old? No, I, you know, listen, I've never lied about my age. I, I'm actually proud, you know, that God has allowed me to live 53 years. So, um, I feel good at 53. I mean, you know, my body still is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, I don't, I still look hot when I get out of the shower. So, I mean, as long as I have the hotness factor, then I'm good. And how dumb would it be for me to be younger than my oldest child? <laughs> that is true. Do you guys have any guilty pleasures? Like, you know, my guilty pleasure in the whole world's guilty pleasure. Like you said, as Chris Lee knows best, love the Kardashians. Like, do you guys love any, like, do you have a guilty pleasure? Like, do you watch Housewives? Do you watch any? I like watch that? Housewives. I will admit, I watch Housewives. I love the Housewives. And yeah. Um, the Housewives is not, my, you know, I don't watch a lot of television at all, but she got me hooked on Housewives of Beverly Hills, but I only watch because I think Kyle Richards is hot and I love her sister, Kathy. That's the only reason that I really watch that. But then I do watch on occasion because Julie's watching it, uh, Housewives of Atlanta, because Candy Burris is one of my dearest, sweetest friends. And I love seeing her because I think that she can give shade better than anybody on television. But my guilty pleasure is is and has been since it came on is Yellowstone with Kevin Costner. So I watched, I, like that I watched too. that. That's and then my dear friends, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill are in the new spinoff 1883. So I love how, t you know, I've always known they were huge talents, but to watch them in this acting environment, it's just given me a whole other appreciation for them. I agree, 1883 is amazing. Although I haven't watched mu much of it. Well, you know, you I guys- I will ruin it for you, but let me just tell you, episode five is amazing. <laughs> really? Okay, well, I'm almost there. Well, listen, I mean, you guys live in Tennessee now, but at some point you did live in Atlanta. We all know that. So, I mean, Julie, I mean, one day, you know, far in the future, 20 years from now, when Chrisley knows best and all the spinoffs might be off the air, would you ever consider joining the Real Housewives of Atlanta? No. Not Atlanta, no. Um, but now you say that, but you're saying it in a different way because you just don't want to be back in Atlanta. No, I just don't want to be back in Atlanta. No, if I could go and go to Old Lady Gang and yeah, and cook with Mama Joyce, I would do that in a minute. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But it's just because we don't want to be back in Atlanta. We don't want that traffic. We, our life is very easy here in Tennessee. But now I would be a housewife of Beverly Hills just so that I could be like best friends with Kathy Hilton. Because yeah. I mean, I feel like that, you know, she would probably leave Rick for me. <laughs> well, being best friends with Kathy Hilton and being, a, you know, I, this I could see. Who do, you yes. think you, who do you think you would fight with if you were a real housewife of Beverly Hills, Todd? I mean, we have, wouldn't he fight with? Right. We have Doreen, <laughs> um, you know, we have Erica. I mean, no, because I love Erica. Um, and Lisa and I are good friends. Um, 
You I, and Dorit could fight I over think labels. Dor I think Dorit and I would probably be the one that would fight because I think, I mean, Dorit's fabulous, but I mean, I don't think anyone's ever going to think she's as fabulous as she does. Um, but, you know, I would probably, you know, Kyle and I would probably argue because she has a menagerie of animals in her home and I don't. <sighs> Kathy and I would probably, Kathy and I are going to be best friends. Y'all would just lunch. Yes, we would be best friends. Kathy and I would be best friends because she's got exquisite taste. Her home is stunning. And listen, she believes that her mother is still in the room with her. And I believe my dad's in the room with me. So she and I would be great friends. I love that. Before we wrap up, I have to say, you know, because we talked about all of your wonderful children. Like, do you guys have like a, you know, now like with, with, Grayson and with Chloe, like, do you have a different parenting style? You know, like, have you, we've seen it a little bit on the show, but like, have you changed as parents, you know, having older children and now having yes, younger? Yes, I think you that, have. I think that as a parent, you evolve, hopefully from one to the next. And we're older raising these kids now. And I think that we now can look at what worked with our older children and what didn't work. And plus, I just don't think the things that I stressed about when I was a young parent Right. even matter to we're me we're just tired now we're beat down yeah you're like do what you want it, it's, yeah. it's fine we don't do that but you know <laughs> there is there is more margin for error there's a little bit more grace given I know you guys don't do that because I watch Christina's best in all the spit-offs <laughs> very right like, a little bit right you let yeah. a little bit a little right bit. Well, listen, I, for one, will be trying Nutrisystem like I said no joke this COVID thing is you know I'm a single gay man in New York City. Like, you know, I'm not, I, I may be just as superficial as you are, Todd, okay? <laughs> well, listen, and if you're going to be a speaker dancer at any point in your career, you need to get on Nutrisystem. <laughs> it's like, and Julie says I could have ice cream sandwiches and pasta. Absolutely. So like, and you'll be fine. Thank you Thank so you much so for having much. us. Thank you guys so much. Keep in yes. touch and we'll be in touch. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, buddy. Bye-bye. See, See you guys. Ya. Bye. Thanks for listening to yet another episode of Behind the Velvet Rope. Because without you listeners, I would just be a crazy person with voices in my head. And if you like what you hear, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on Apple Podcasts under Behind the Velvet Rope. And when you're done subscribing, feel free to leave a five-star write-up review because the write-up reviews actually count. We read each and every one of them. We post the best ones and the reviews really help our shows keep going. And we really appreciate everything you guys say, especially the positive ones. And if you want to find us online, we're at Behind Velvet Rope on Instagram. We are at David Yontef on Instagram. We're behind the Velvet Rope on Apple Podcasts. Or head on over to Patreon because you know what? There are just some things we can't talk about here. So for our bonus episodes, go to Patreon and type in Behind the Velvet Rope. And if you still aren't sick of me and you want more David, go to Cameo and book me on Cameo. And you can ask me anything there. I'll answer whatever you want. And I have a bargain basement price of $10. Thank you guys. See you soon.